All right. So last time we met, we talked about two sad elements. Do you remember talking about the sad elements? Cations, cat, cat ions and anions. All right. The two sad elements became happy when they became anions and cations. <laughs> That's right. But what were the two elements that we were talking about combining together? Uh, chlorine. That's right, chloride, chlorine, and? And A. And A, which NA stands for what? Sodium. Sodium, that's right. And we said that we could look at the location of these elements on the periodic table and know, whoops, what kind of chemistry they would like to perform, right? We could look at chlorine and see that because it needs one more electron to have a noble gas electron configuration, it wants to do what? Be argon. Argon. It wants to gain that electron. That's right. Whereas sodium wants to do what? Um, minus one. Lose an electron. Now, here's the trick. Here's the thing. We just said, and I just heard you say, sodium wants to minus an electron. Now, the, the problem is when people say minus, they think, oh, sodium wants to minus electrons, so it's going to have a, a negative charge. But that's not how it is, is it? Because when it loses an electron, what kind of a charge does it get? Um. Is it a positive charge if it loses an electron? How many electrons and protons does this atom have? Um, 11. 11 protons. Does it have 11 electrons as well? Yes. Yes, it does. 11 electrons. But the chemistry is going to occur. It's going to give an electron to the chlorine. So now it still has 11 protons because Atoms don't gain and lose protons in chemistry. They only gain and lose electrons, all right? So it still has 11 protons, but now if it gives up an electron, how many electrons is it going to have? Uh, 10. 10. 10 negative charges. So if you have 11 positive charges and 10 negative charges, the result is one positive charge left over. So the sodium becomes a positively charged atom, which we call an ion. And which ones are the positively charged ions called? What kind? Is it an anion or a cation? Cation. Cation. Very good. Now, chlorine, what kind of a charge does it get? A negative. It gets a negative charge. That's right, because it had... How many electrons did it have over here on the left? 17. 17, and now it has how many? 18. 18 electrons, that's right. And from those ions, we can see that this is a plus one and this is a minus one. They come together in a one-to-one -one ratio, one sodium for every chlorine because that one has a positive charge and that one has a negative charge. All right. Now. If we look at two atom, two ions, for example, here's an iron plus three ion, and here's an oxygen minus two ion, all right? And we would like to identify what kind of compound they can form when they come together, all right? What kind of compound can they form? Well, where did iron those three pluses, where did it lose those pluses to? Where did they go? It went to oxygen. That's right. Oxygen got those electrons from the iron atom. How many uh, uh, electrons did oxygen get from the iron atom? Two. Two. How many electrons did iron let go? Three. Three. Well, where did that extra electron go? If it lost, if this one lost or gained two electrons and the iron lost three, where'd the extra electron go? Um, exploded. 
No. Electrons don't disappear. They don't disappear. They have to go somewhere. So the answer is it had to go to a different atom of oxygen. All right? So we need not just one atom of oxygen. We need a second. So if you have an iron that lost three electrons, you need to have more oxygen ions to result, right? But oxygen only wants to form a minus two charge. So now how many electrons did the oxygens take altogether? Four. Four. But how many did iron give? Three. Three. That's right. So now we need to, where did we get that fourth electron? We need to have two of these plus three ions. Now, how many electrons did iron give up between the two of them? Six. Six. So we need one more oxygen to take two electrons. And now we can see if two atoms of iron lose three electrons, then three atoms of oxygen can gain two electrons. And the number that was given up is equal to the number that was taken. Can you see that? Yep. So the resulting compound that will form is Fe, there's two of them, O, there's three of them, Fe2, O3. So if we give specific ions like this, if we're given specific ions, we can predict the resulting compound that will form, all right? by looking at the ions. And you can kind of see here, there's, there's kind of an interesting uh, uh, scenario. Fe with a plus three and oxygen with a minus two. If you kind of think of an arrow being drawn like that, then the Fe gets the two, and the O, there's three of them, right? So that's a little trick to help you recognize the appropriate ratio of iron atoms to or iron ions to oxygen ions to form the, the, the right compound. Okay? Very good. So, what does calcium do to form a calcium plus two ion? What does it do if it's forming a two plus ion? Um, it has to like Give away. No, it has to get two electrons. All right. Let's think about that some more. Calcium here. I'm going to bring in my periodic table. Let's see how many protons and how many electrons calcium has. Can you see? Um. CA has 20. 20. Very good. Calcium has 20 protons and 20 electrons. It has the same number of positive charges as negative charges. That's why it, there's no charge here. But this species with a, a plus 2 or a, a 2 plus it really doesn't matter how you draw it, plus two or two plus, it's fine. Don't worry about that. There's a, there's a small reason why they do that, but it doesn't matter too much. So if I have a calcium two plus, why does that, where does that two plus, what does that two plus mean? There's two more what? Two more electrons? Um, yeah, no. Negative. It's minus two. Negative two? So let me let me redraw that so I'm not confusing us. We got calcium with 20 protons and 20 electrons. Now, calcium with uh, two positive charges. Why does it get two positive charges? Did it did it gain two protons? No. No, it how many protons does this have? Electrons. It did what? It lost two electrons. That's right. Still has 20 protons, but now it only has 18 electrons. 
So how does calcium go from Ca to Ca plus 2? It loses two electrons. Now, again, the, the positive charge here makes you want to say you add two of something. Okay? So don't think of this as uh, adding or subtracting. Think of it as the resulting charge, the resulting charge between the protons and the electrons. So if there's more positive charge, and atoms don't lose protons or gain protons, it has to be gaining or losing electrons. All right. So how does this ion form, an N3 minus? Um, it gains three electrons. Very good. It gains three electrons. Fabulous. So here it is. Sodium gives that electron to chlorine. Sodium becomes a positive charge. Chlorine becomes a negatively charged ion. And the result is this ionic compound called sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Here, let's watch this video. It'll show us how it happens. Inside this flask of green chlorine gas, we put a little piece of sodium metal. There's a the little piece of sodium metal. It goes inside this green chlorine gas. Uh, gas, this flask. We're going to use this, this little rod here to get the, the, the sodium to fall onto the ground. There's some sand in here to, to prevent any cracking of the glass just in case a reaction occurs. So we put a little tiny drop of water to get the sodium heated up a little bit because the reaction won't happen by itself. So we put a little drop of water and then some heat is formed and then the sodium and chloride react and you see a powder. See that powder in the air? That powder is little tiny dust particles of sodium chloride, solid, floating around. All right, there it is. Our metal sodium combined with our non-metal chlorine gas to form sodium chloride. Excellent. Now, these ions, right, the ions, can be kind of detected when they're in solution, all right? And the way that we can detect them is that we can see that in water, if you have ionic compound dissolved in water, the solution, the resulting salt solution, uh, the water and the salt combined, will conduct electricity, conduct electricity. This doesn't mean it makes electricity. Okay, let me, let me show you how you make electricity. Here's how you make electricity. You go to the store and you buy one of these. Tell me if you know what this is. What is this? Um, oh, battery. A battery. There's where you get electricity, right? We'll talk about electricity and how it's created in later chapters. But salt solutions don't make electricity. They conduct it. So here's my battery. If I connect this battery to a light bulb, okay, so here's a light bulb. Whoops, it connects right there. One connects on the side here and one connects on the bottom, and the result is you get light. Ta-da! Okay, now if I take this battery and instead of connecting it to the light bulb like that, I take the light bulb, I connect this end to the light bulb, and this end, I don't connect. I don't connect. Let me draw the rest of the light bulb there. If I have a cut in the wire, do you think that I'm going to get any uh, light? to shine? Uh, no. No, that's right. The energy from the battery needs to pass through the light bulb and come back to the other side of the battery. Because that's why there's always two portals for a plug. Even, even this. Let me see if you can recognize this. What is this? Oh, an outlet. Yeah, an outlet. Same thing. We got two plugs. This is a ground. 
but really in the olden days they were all just two plugs and there's one place where the electricity comes in and there's one place where the electricity goes out and this is a safety mechanism to test whether or not there's too much electricity because if there's too much it can get hot and it'll light a fire and can burn down houses and stuff and that's what used to happen and so we added that little safety outlet to let electricity go when too much was 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 passing through so the same thing there's two ports positive and negative positive and negative and you need that to make a complete connection the electricity runs up here goes up through the wire in the side of the light bulb comes back down and then travels to the other side but if you break the connection here then no light will be produced because the electricity can't travel through it so um, if I take these ends and bring them down here still not touching them but I have maybe a piece of metal so let's say I have a piece of metal and I bring that piece of metal and I touch them together as soon as I touch them together the light will start to shine I let go and the light stops shining. Touch them together again and the light will start to shine. Because the, the piece of metal allows the electricity to conduct through the circuit, we call it. All right? Now, if I take not a piece of metal, but a glass of pure water. This is H2O, pure water. If I take a glass of water the electricity can't travel through it. The electricity can't travel through this. Now, don't try this at home, because if you take water from the tap and try this, electricity will pass through it. But it's not because our tap water, it's not because electricity passes through tap water. It's because tap water actually has a significant amount of salt dissolved in it already, all right? In fact, you know, it would be bad for your body if you drank water that didn't have any salt in it, it could damage your kidneys, all right? So, if you have pure water right here and you try to pass the electricity through, it won't pass through. However, if I take some, here's my little dish of an ionic compound, like sodium chloride. If I put that ionic compound in, it dissolves and those ions that are in this ionic compound then allow electricity to pass through and the light will light up. Was the sodium chloride making the electricity? No. No. Where was, what was making the electricity? The battery. The battery was making the electricity. What did the sodium chloride do that allowed the light to light up? It allowed the electricity go through it and go out the other side. That's right. And we called that, it made the water conductive, conductive. Allowed the electricity to conduct through the, the water, through the solution. So that is a test that we talk about often in class to see whether something is conductive. What we do is we get a light bulb, we have a, a battery, and that this little minus sign and that plus sign represents the battery. And then these are our, our, our electrodes that we put into a sample of something. If we put so, so, solid sodium chloride, an ionic comp compound like that, it won't light up the electrolyte. Or it won't, it won't uh, light up the light. It won't allow the conduction to pass through, okay? If we melt, the, so, the solid, we melt the sodium chloride or melt the, uh, the ionic compound, then yes, the electricity can pass through and you'll get a light bulb. And again, pure water, no light, but when I put salt, sodium chloride in the solution, I do get a light. Now, I need to tell you one more thing. All your life, we have called this stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a picture and you try to tell me what it is I'm drawing. Okay, ready? Here we go. I'm drawing something. Ready? Go. Salt shaker. Hmm? 
Salt shaker. Salt shaker, very good. And inside here I have some salt. All our life we have called that salt. But I have to tell you something now. In reality, the word salt, <coughs> excuse me, as a chemist, the word salt doesn't mean sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is not just the salt, it's a kind of salt. It's a kind of salt. In fact, any ionic compound is called a salt. A salt. Any ionic compound is called a salt. So when you combine sodium and fluorine together and make sodium chloride, it's not the salt, not the only salt, it's a salt. If you add potassium with iodine, potassium iodide, that's a salt too. Magnesium and bromine, magnesium bromide, that's a salt too. Any ionic compound that is formed is called a salt. Okay, is that all right? Does that make you mad that we were tricking you and calling sodium chloride the only salt? Yep. Okay, good. So ionic compounds are also referred to as salts. All right, now molecular compounds do not conduct electricity. So water doesn't conduct electricity. Carbon dioxide doesn't conduct electricity. All right, any ionic compound, uh, sugar, sugar, if I take sugar and dissolve it in the water, I won't get any conductivity across uh, my electrode. Okay, so we're going to play this game again. Remember this fun game? Oh, yeah. It's different than last time because now our symbols are slightly different. Do you see that? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. A little bit harder. Let's see if we can do the first one. How many protons? Uh, 27. Very good. How many neutrons? Uh, 33. 33. Excellent. Here's the tough one now. How many electrons? 24. 24. Very good. The plus 3 charge doesn't mean we're adding electrons. The plus three charge is the resulting positive charge because of the imbalance between the protons and the electrons. Therefore, if it's a positive charge, it means we, we have fewer electrons. All right, bromine 81 with a negative charge. Oh. How many protons? 35. 35. How about neutrons? Forty-six. Forty-six. Very good. And electrons? Um, thirty-five? Thirty-five is the same number of protons, right? But yeah. what's different here now? Is there any charge? Oh, on it? thirty-six. Thirty-six. Very good, because of the extra negative charge on it. All right, so what species is represented by this bottom one here? Uh, krypton. Uh, 36 protons? Yep. Oh, yep, I see there's a problem with this slide. Hold on just a second. Okay, so what species do you think goes here? Copper. Copper what? CU. CU, yes. But remember how we called these like cobalt 60 and bromide 81? What co co copper what? Oh. One second. Cobalt 65. Not cobalt, but copper, right? Copper 65. Copper 65. And is there a charge on it or no? Yes. What kind of a charge is there going to be if there's 29 Positive. protons and 27 electrons? What kind? Positive 2. Positive 2. Very good. Copper 65 with a plus 2 charge. Excellent work. 
Okay, so we can also look at the periodic table, and from the periodic table, we can predict the kinds of ions different elements will want to form if they interact with other elements. So for example, sodium, we said, likes to form a plus one charge because it has 11 electrons, and if it could have 10, it can attain, and this is a very important phrase, but it's kind of hard to, to, to understand, a noble gas electron configuration. Configuration means the electrons are configured or arranged the same way as those of a noble gas. And so it stabilizes itself. Potassium. You can see it has 19 electrons. And so because it has 19 electrons, I can look over here to the noble gases and determine what kind of adjustment to its electrons it would like to undergo. What do you think? What would potassium like to do? A minus one. Lose an electron. That's right. And result in a positive charge. How about magnesium? Can you look at magnesium and see what it would like to do? Minus two. Minus two. Very good. How about aluminum? Minus three. Minus three. So it's going to have what kind of a charge? Positive. Positive what? Three. Positive three charge. Very good. How about sulfur? What would it like to do? Uh, gain two. Gain two electrons. Have a minus two charge. Excellent. So based on its location on the periodic table, we can predict whether an atom would like to gain or lose electrons. And what we see is here on this staircase that separates the metals from the nonmetals, these nonmetals like to gain electrons because that's the easiest way for them to attain noble gas electron configurations. But these metals over here would like to lose electrons because that's the easiest way for them to attain noble gas electron configuration. Wait, what would... Uh, number 14 want to do? 14. Very, very good question. Because you can see that it gains 1, 2, 3, 4, and it stabilizes it. It loses 1, 2, 3, 4, and it stabilizes itself. And that's what really one of the properties that makes it a semi-metal. So it can behave like a metal sometimes, and it behaves like a non-metal sometimes. And that's why we used silicon, silicon wafers to store data really our understanding of silica that resulted, silicon, that resulted in uh, our invention of computers and storing data in computers. So understanding these elements and asking, just like the question you just asked, are the things that change the world, right? Understanding our periodic table and asking those questions can change the world, all right? So um, very, very good question. Another really interesting question is oh, carbon. Carbon is a nonmetal, but it's in the same situation. It can gain or lose four electrons. And because of that, what we end up having is we have so much flexibility when we make compounds from carbon that there, there's essentially an infinite number of ways that carbon can combine with other compounds. And that means uh, we can make any kind of compound, any shape we want. And because of that, we have our own little class uh, about carbon chemistry called organic chemistry. Organic chemistry. And in that class, you learn about how people make, for example, cures to, to diseases. They find the problem of the disease, and then they make a carbon compound that fits just perfectly to stop that problem from occurring. And because carbon can come together in so many different ways, they can always, if, the, if this problem is a little bit different, then they find a different kind of solution, right? They can shape the, the solution uh, using carbon chemistry or organic chemistry. All right, very good questions. So let's finish up this slide and then we'll stop for now. Metals from cations lose electrons. So calcium, 
Look at your periodic table and tell me what kind of an ion calcium would like to form. Um, minus two. <laughs> minus two? Uh-oh, why does it say plus two? Oh, two positive. That's right. It wants to lose two electrons, but it results in a positive two charge. Very good. What does sodium want to do? What kind of ion does sodium want to form? Um, it wants to become a neon. Uh huh. And to do that, and minus, and minus one electron. Lose one electron, and if it loses an electron, what kind of a charge is it going to have? One plus. A plus one. Does that make it a cation or an anion? Cation. Very good. Cation. How about nitrogen? What kind of a charge would nitrogen like to form? Uh, gain three. Gain three. What kind of a charge three. does that mean? What? Ne minus three. Or negative That's right. Three. three minus. Very good. How about oxygen? Uh, two minus. Two minus. Fabulous job. Very good. Next time we'll talk about the how we write ionic compounds chemical formulas for ionic compounds, uh, how to write them. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye now.